Senator Marco Rubio joins us, Republican of Florida, newly endorsed relatively by President Trump for re-election. Senator Rubio, welcome to Newsmax, I believe, for the very first time. Great to see you, sir. Well, thanks for having me on. I, I think I've been in interviews before, where, like in the hallways, but I'm not sure I've been on a show yet. So thanks for having me. Yeah, no, this is a uh, prime time. So thank you, Senator. Hey, um, very enthusiastic uh, endorsement from President Trump. Uh, it looks like you guys look, worked really well together. Are you surprised by that at all? I mean, let's face it, it was pretty competitive back in 15, 16, but uh, you really forged a pretty nice relationship here. Yeah, look, I mean, 2016, I ran for president. It's a comp competitive environment. But since the moment I ended, ended that race and during throughout the Trump presidency were very productive years for me, we, we worked very well together with the Trump White House and with the president. And he outlined a lot of the things that we worked on. You're talking about Latin America. You're talking about China. You're talking about PPP. Uh, one of the first bills the president signed that he talked about often was the veterans, uh, the VA reform bill that we passed that, that he signed into law. So we did a lot of positive things together, a very productive time and a very good working relationship and, and continue. Plus, and this is something people don't pick up on, this is an extra special endorsement because he's now a resident and a voter in Florida. So I don't just need an endorsement. I need his vote and the oh. vote of all his family who are also moving to Florida. Okay, excellent, excellent. Look, I know this issue is very important to you, and a lot of folks are not aware of it. Uh, the burn pits that are used by the military overseas, and we have some video of these things uh, in places like Iraq and Afghanistan, the military gets rid of their waste by burning it. Uh, I don't think they meant any harm, but potentially a lot of harm was done. You've heard from people. John Stewart is actually active in this. Veterans, members of the active duty who say that they have been sickened, have very serious diseases, including cancer, as a result of this. But uh, what's the status? Because I believe it has not been scientifically proven at this point. So what can be done? Well, there's a couple points. Number one is, if you think about these people, we send them overseas, put them in danger, and they're in these areas where the way they got rid of garbage and so forth is they burned it, and they burned it using jet fuel. Then you have a lot of these young veterans returning home and have these very rare cancers that develop among a significant number of them, and their families are wiped out by it. And so, it, frankly, it's impossible. To be frank, it's impossible to be able to prove a direct linkage between those burn pits and that cancer. But by the time you prove it, if you could, it's probably too late. These folks have gone bankrupt. Many have passed away. Their families are left destitute. So here's the way I view it. There has to, and this is what the bill says. The bill says there's a presumption that if you served overseas in uniform near one of these burn pits for a substantial period of time and you develop one of these rare cancers that you don't typically see in the population, there is a presumption that it was caused by that. And the way I view it is twofold. Number one is we put people in harm's way. We have an obligation to take care of them. Number two is... At worst, the worst thing that could happen here is that we actually provide health care for people who served our country in uniform overseas in a danger zone. This is not for people that served anywhere. It's for people that served in these very dangerous zones. So I don't know how, at the end of the day, providing health care for veterans that have come back after serving our country could possibly be a bad outcome. Uh, hey, you've got my support. Uh, it sounds terrific. And those burn pits uh, were pretty big. Uh, Senator, um, I know you're, you have a passion for foreign affairs. You heard the plan. Joe Biden wants troops out of Afghanistan. I think the deadline now is September 11th of this year. How do you feel about that? How are you right now on Afghanistan? Well, look, yeah, I mean, the Trump administration had, had reached this agreement to withdraw by May 1st. So that their decision was whether to continue with that or not. Uh, but once that decision was made and inherited by the new administration, now the question is, number one, how do we do it in a way that is safe for our men and women that are still stationed there? And second, what we really need to keep an eye on at this point is, OK, we're not going to be in Afghanistan. There's a high likelihood, and I hope I'm wrong about this, but there's a very high likelihood that the Taliban retakes that country almost entirely or partially. And that once they do, the al-Qaeda is going to return and establish a safe haven there. And we know what happened the last time they had a safe haven in Afghanistan. So if we're not going to be there on the ground with troops, and that's now coming to an end, we need to have a plan for how we're going to sustain pressure on al-Qaeda so they can't you know, reform, come back together, and then all of a sudden, three or four years from now, we're facing new threats here in the homeland and in other parts of the world. So that really needs to be our focus now. The decision to leave was made under the Trump administration. Now we just have to make sure that we do what we can so al-Qaeda can't reconstitute and come after us like they did. Uh, and on September 11th of 2001. Right. And of course, the Biden administration, though, because it was a Trump plan, they had to modify it, uh, put the Biden stamp on it, I guess. Uh, so, Senator, um, could you run for president in uh, 2024 
if President Trump is a candidate? I know this is a hypothetical, and uh, but could you run against President Trump? Uh, he just endorsed you. He's, you know, they say he's the head of the party, essentially, de facto. What's your, what would you say to that? Yeah, I think my view on that is that President Trump is the most popular and most influential Republican in America. I think he'll still be that in 22 and in 24. And uh, if he decides to run for president and for the nomination, he's going to be the party's nominee, and that's the way I would view it. Um, it, it you know, again, he hasn't made that decision. It's still a long way off down the road. But I, if Donald Trump decides to, to run for president in, in 2024 again, he's going to be the Republican nominee. And I think almost everyone that I've talked to would agree with that. So, uh, folks, you can follow Marco Rubio, Senator Rubio, at Marco Rubio. Twitter can be a pretty noxious place and uh, all kinds of partisan combat going on. But I noticed, Senator, you put a Bible verse on every day. And I can tell you, you never know who you're going to touch with those messages in the middle of uh, the Twitter chaos. So uh, thank you for that. And I recommend everybody follow you. Thank you. I appreciate that. It, uh, it's right out of the Catholic Daily Mass for the most part. So um, I don't pick them most of the time. Uh, someone else has done that through the liturgy. But I, that's how I start my day. And I like to share it with people. Some people get offended by it. You know, they don't have to follow me. They don't have to read it. Yeah, it's amazing. You put out a, a message of peace and uh, what some people uh, take that to mean. It's pretty wild. But uh, I know there's tremendous value, the ultimate value in it. Senator Rubio, continued success and come back soon, please. Thank you very much. God bless. Thank you.